Hey, 11th grade, welcome back. Mr. Hart here with your lesson on verb tense. So previously, remember, we have learned that all sentences are composed of a subject and a predicate. We know that the simple predicate literally just means the verb. So let's talk about verbs today and let's see uh, what, what verbs can be uh, in, in terms of different tenses. So there are three terms we want to start with. Verbs can be either past, present, or future. So let's go ahead and jump into each of those words. So we know that the past is something that's already completed, something done in the past. Oftentimes it is marked with ed. Um, so like, rather than play, played. Sometimes, though, there are irregular verbs for the past tense, and we'll talk about those in just a moment. The present tense is something that is in the moment, or it's happening right now. Future tense, pretty straightforward. It's going to happen, or will happen. And those two, those right there are kind of always the perfect way to discover uh, future tense. If you see those, unless it's referring to the name will, then you know we're in the future tense. Now, a couple more words we need to keep in consideration. Tenses can also be, in addition to past, present, and future, they can be simple, they can be progressive, and they can be perfect. Let's go ahead and let's dissect those terms as well. So we know that simple means, and this is kind of just a cheat way to do this, so um, there, there's a more technical explanation, but this is how I feel. Uh, I think I remember it best this way. But simple um, means that there's really no ing ending, and there's also no participle, which is has, had, or have. So I know that's confusing, but bear with me here. Let's keep working and it'll make more sense. So when we look at progressive, the progressive has an I-N-G ending because the progressive tense is something's ongoing. The perfect tense has the participle has, had, or have, and will have for a future participle, by the way. But take a look here. The simple form of a tense has no ing and no participle. The progressive form of a tense has ing, and the perfect has the participle has, had, or have. So now you can have any combination of these things, but you always must have one of these words and one or two of these words. So uh, what I mean is I'm gonna just give you one example and then we'll jump to the next video where I have quite a few examples of these in practice. But here's what I'm getting at. So we can have a past tense verb that is simple. So that would be a completed action that does not have ing and does not have a participle. It would also, let's, let's do another one. Let's, actually, I'll just keep going with you. We can have a present tense verb that is progressive. So that would be something that's happening in the moment and it has the ing on it. And then we can also have like a future verb, for example, and perfect. That would mean, this is actually really confusing, that there's a completed action in the future, which is so hard to wrap your head around, but I promise it works. Um, and then you can actually, in addition to those things, you could have any one of these three terms with progressive and perfect. So what I mean is you could have future perfect progressive, present perfect progressive, past perfect progressive. You can never have more than just simple though. If a verb tense is uh, in the simple form, then you cannot have a progressive or a perfect with it. So it's either always going to be uh, simple alone, or it could be perfect or progressive alone, or it could be perfect 
and progressive if it has the participle and ing. This will make more sense as we go ahead and jump into some examples. So go ahead, go to the next video, and let's look at some examples together. Thank you.